Hello YouTube, Bushcraft Woods Devil here. Just wanted to shoot a quick video and talk a little bit about personal safety. I wanted to talk about what's called a survival triangle. I spent 33 years in law enforcement and uh, this was uh, something that we taught, but it's fully applicable to private persons, uh, anybody, even military. Basically, it's like the fire triangle. If you take away, you've all seen the fire triangle, uh, fuel source, ignition, and oxygen. If you take away any one of those uh, aspects, the uh, fire can't burn, so you don't have a wildland fire. Well, the survival triangle is kind of the same thing. Uh, to survive a, an encounter or a confrontation, you need to have proficiency with tools, whatever tools or, that you're using to defend yourself. You have to have some knowledge of tactics, awareness, avoidance, um, positioning, position of advantage, and conditioning, mental and uh, physical conditioning uh, so that you're fit for, for combat. Talking about tools, um, in law enforcement, your appearance, your professional appearance, and your demeanor were your first, first tool, how you stood. Um, did you appear to be uh, fit and uh, proficient? Somebody that uh, probably someone should not attack because uh, you would uh, put up a good fight. We've all seen obese, overweight, uh, peace officers and thought, wow, how can that guy defend himself? Well, there you go. And it's the same thing with you when you're walking around in uh, public and like that. Um, you may, you know, uh, may give the appearance that you're an easy mark. Maybe you're looking uh, lost or uh, you don't look confident. You look scared. Uh, a lot of predators read this in women. They see a woman walking with her arms folded and holding her purse to her chest and keeps looking over her shoulder and glancing around, well, she looks scared, and, and they read that as, uh, as someone that's vulnerable. These guys that uh, carry out assaults and uh, attacks, they are predators. They're excellent, outstanding at reading people. They're, they're basically just looking for prey. So your, your physical conditioning, the fitness for uh, confrontation or for combatives, and your mental conditioning. Have you um, run some scenarios in your mind? Have you um, uh, inoculated yourself uh, through training so that you know when you get into a situation what to do? Um, again, talking about tools, your appearance is your first step. Verbal skills, talking to someone. If you uh, run into a person and they are uh, being aggressive towards you, maybe an aggressive homeless person, or maybe you're having a confrontation with someone over a parking space. Maybe they felt that the parking space was theirs and you zoomed into it and now they, they want to interview you personally. Um, your verbal skills to de-escalate and defuse the situation are critical. The next step up the ladder uh, might be uh, empty hands, physical skills. Somebody comes towards you uh, taking steps to um, push them away and um, deflect. Uh, next up the ladder might come a tool like a uh, chemical spray, pepper spray. Um, you could even use this before you go hands-on because this gives you a degree of um, standoff distance. This will project probably uh, 10, 12 feet and um, I would recommend getting the gel. This is a spray, and the problem is, is if you're too close, this will bounce right off of them. When you spray them, it can bounce off and cross-contaminate you. The gel is a little better um, for that regard, that it's uh, not likely to cross-contaminate you, and that's what my next pepper spray will be, is gel. So this gives you a little standoff distance in a, a non-lethal confrontation. Um, a person closing the distance, maybe you're going to use an impact weapon. Here is a 
uh, tactical flashlight with a um, crenulated um, tip that could be used as a um, field expedient uh, impact weapon. This will fit in your hand, it protrudes out a little bit so that you can do strikes or gouges. Um, small enough that it would be hard for them to rest it from your control if you're gripping it. Or you've seen my video on uh, the homemade um, uh, impact tool. This is a uh, capo or a yawara stick. This is a homemade one made from a piece of ash. Uh, you don't have to spend money to make a, a tool. You can jab with it, do hammer fist strikes, you know, targeting uh, soft targets. Uh, the throat, temple, uh, sternum, different areas like that. This is just a homemade tool. And then you have like commercially made tools. This is a Cold Steel Koga SD-1, uh, which is pretty heavy, pretty strongly built. This will break plywood. Um, this is a little larger, it protrudes from your hands a little further. Uh, this one possibly could be wrested from you by a more powerful person, so that, that's an impact tool. And you start getting into uh, more um, uh, potentially lethal uh, forms of uh, self-defense. Here you have a tactical folding knife. Now, the thing with this is, uh, you know, you're looking at a situation that's much more dire. Maybe uh, you have somebody that's... Uh, assaultive and maybe uh, really means you harm and you may decide in your mind that you need to use a larger degree of force or maybe this is all you have uh, or it's a very disproportionate situation you're a small person or older and you're dealing with a larger or younger more aggressive um, uh, person one of the things I learned in law enforcement was that all the time that I was growing older in my career uh, the person I was dealing with was remaining uh, young and the same. So uh, when I started out my career, I was uh, 5'10", 150, 21 years old, and the person I was uh, dealing with and arresting was 5'10", 150, 21 years old. And then 10 years downrange, I'm 31, and I've put on some pounds, and um, they're still 21 and 5'10", 150. And then I get down to 40, and then 50, and then 55, and by 55... I'm 210 pounds, sorry to say, <laughs> and uh, that guy, and I'm, I'm 55 years old, and that guy is still 21, 5'10", 150, and extremely strong. So now we have this, this disproportionate situation where uh, I have to rely more on tools and tactics than physical conditioning. So just something to be aware of. And it'll never be fair... Uh, like for some people that are smaller stature or, or ladies or like that against a larger, more aggressive assailant. The thing I want to recommend is that uh, when it comes to personal safety is get some training. Go to your local um, police department or um, your local uh, victims advocacy group, um, um, sexual assault awareness and prevention. A lot of these groups offer free instruction. College universities, campus uh, safety groups offer these uh, areas of instruction. And um, get some training, get some, uh, some knowledge. They'll run you through scenarios. They'll put on uh, mock scenarios and run you through where you're dealing with different kinds of aggressive persons and learning skills how to uh, deal with them. Just keep in mind that uh, every um, device or tool that you have has the potential to be turned against you. So if you're carrying, say, a tactical folder knife and you deploy it, it's, if this is taken away from you, it can be used against you and now you're at great risk. Or a firearm. Um, you know, the important thing is always be aware that, uh, you know, for the most part, our lives are pretty safe and uh, we don't run into these situations, but strange things happen. So having some training and having some awareness uh, of your environment and people in the area is really critical. We want to practice avoidance and not get into a situation. The best fight is the fight that you do not have to fight. Um, you've probably heard of the OODA loop, observe, orient. Um, decide and act. It's a military acronym and basically uh, you can use it for personal safety. You're walking down a sidewalk 
You see a homeless man coming towards you. He's ranting. He's throwing fists in the air. He appears to be aggressive. So you observe him. You orient yourself. You look around the neighborhood. Which direction can I go to avoid this man? Hmm, I can cross the street and go into a coffee shop for a moment. You decide, that's what I'll do. And you act. You cross the street. You go into the coffee shop. You wait till he's safely passed. And you continue on your way. Uh, too many people go into situations and think, well, I'll just walk by him, take a chance. Uh, it'll Probably nothing will happen. Uh, it's probably just me worrying excessively. Uh, probably better off to default on the side of safety than to run that risk. I know of several people that tried to take that uh, chance and ended up getting injured. So get some training, practice good awareness, um, develop your own survival triangle. Learn tools that you can use, develop tactics, and keep yourself mentally and physically conditioned for good personal safety. I can't emphasize enough the importance of going out and getting some instruction on how to uh, not be a victim. And there are a lot of classes out there that um, are available to you. A lot of them you don't even have to pay for. They're just as applicable in town in urban situations as they are on the trail. Don't be a victim. Get some training. All right, that's all I got for you today. Stay safe and um, get out there on the trail and look around. And we'll catch you later.